your hands and celebrate Jesus? Can you throw your hands in the air? Give him a sound of praise. Can your hands go high? Can you wave it to him in adoration, in worship? Just wave your hands to him. Now begin to speak words to him. Tell him how good he has been. Tell him about his kindness. Tell him about his message that has brought you this far. Tell him about his grace. Adore your king. Worship him. Lord, these are the hands of the ones that are grateful. These are the, one, the hands of the ones that have come to say thank you. You alone deserve my worship. You alone deserve my praise. You alone deserve the honor. So we lift you high. Yeah.
amazing to you. If you know he's been amazing, lift up your hands and tell him that he's everything you will ever need in life. He fulfills your deepest longings. No one comes first in your life. We serve a God who is a good God and who knows how to do good things for his children. Father, today we lift up our hands and we bless and glorify your name. No one indeed knows what we've been through, what you've done for us, but we know how you showed us mercy. We know how you provided for us in the past week. We know how you showed up for us when you needed you most and today we've come to give you glory we've come to bless your name hallelujah praise the lord you may be seated say to somebody welcome to church say to somebody welcome to church and to all the mothers in the house happy mother's day we will bring forth, we have brought forth children that will impact the nations. And we will be there on the days of their celebrations. We will not be represented mothers. We will be there. We will not be carried or we will not sit on the wheelchair. We will stand on the day of the celebrations of our children. For the seeds that we have sown in their lives, we will reap a great harvest. In the name of Jesus. And anyone who hasn't had a child yet, you will carry your own. You will give suckle to your children in the name of Jesus. My name is Tara Dita Ojoko. I'm the pastor in charge of the Family Life Service Group. And today I want to bring the word through the power seed as well as our covenant confession. So today is Sunday the 10th of March, seed 10. And the topic is blessing the multiplier. Our key text, Matthew chapter 14, verses 18 to 19. He said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. Everything on earth can only exist in one of two states, it is either blessed or cursed. Our key text today, gotten from a familiar story, shows a perfect example of what it means to be blessed. It is picked up from the household tale of how five loaves and two fishes were made to feed 5,000 men and an unrecorded number of women and children. The multiplication effect of the blessing was on full display. What else could turn a kiddie sized meal into a full on buffet? Now, you and I are certainly not loaves of bread and fish, but that doesn't mean we aren't blessed. Say, I am blessed. We were the first receivers of the blessing. You can see that in Genesis 1 28. And by design, our lives should be a reflection of this. Say, my life. Is the reflection of the blessing. So how do you experience the multiplier effect of the blessing? Number one, pursue after God and trust in his lifting power. Just like the bread and fish only multiplied when they were given to Jesus. We only realize our fullness when we are in Christ. Number two, create marketable goods and services. You can do something to add value to your world. Go out and get your hands busy. Number three, fight spiritual opposition. The devil is always interested in whatever God is interested in. The blessings always, always comes with battles. So stand. And number four, stay favored by generosity. Give and it shall be given unto you. A closed hand not only stops things from going out, but it also stops things from coming in. Say, today I release my hand and I receive. So say this prayer after me. Say, Father, multiply my efforts and bless the works of my hands. Say it again. Father, multiply my efforts and bless the works of my hands. And this week, the Lord will do so abundantly in the name of Jesus. There is an action point. 
And the action point, this action point is very key. Write a list of things today when you get back home. Or you can even do it right now in church. Write a list of things you can do to move your life to the next level and pray about them. Write a list of things you can do. Think, put on your thinking cap. Write a list of things you can do to move your life to the next level. And then begin to pray over those things this week. And you will see that the Lord will command resources and help to locate you in the name of Jesus. So let's go straight to our covenant confession now. And as our practice, we're going to do it together at the count of three. ICT, are you ready for us? One, two, three. I confess that God is a good God. He is my source. He is taking good care of me. My life is sustained by his covenant. Today, standing on Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 10, I affirm that Jesus Christ is my Lord. He died and rose from the dead. His sacrifice paid the price for all my sins. He is in heaven now, but his Holy Spirit lives in me. Jesus is my life. I live by his word. I am led by his spirit. I believe that in him and through him, I am a member of the family of God. And very soon, he will come back to take me home. Because of Jesus Christ, I am blessed of God. My DNA is supernatural. I walk in prosperity. I create my dreams. I find favor everywhere. Kings come to the brightness of my rising. Nations open their gates and treasures to me. I cannot fail. Nothing dies in my hands. No power can hurt my destiny. Goodness and mercy follow me at all times. On my path, there is no sickness nor death. This year, 2024, I received the covenant of Rohi. The Lord is my shepherd. Going to international church is my spiritual family. I put God first. I pray my sight. I am a soul winner. I serve in God's kingdom. My life works. My faith works. My relationships work. My business works. Everything works. My covenant place is at the topmost top. Every promise and prophecy of 2024 will be fulfilled in my life. There shall be no loss nor evil report in my life this year. And only good things are permitted in my life. Say it again. You know, today is a special service. So we have our children from the NGC ministry. They are coming to minister to us right now. So let's give it up for our children. Sat and washed my infant head, lying sleeping on my cradle bed, a tears of sweet affection shed, my When sleeping on my cradle bed, and tears of sweet affection shed, my mother. My mother, when pain and sickness laid me by, who gazed upon my heavy eyes, and tears of fear that I should die, my mother. My mother, who taught my infant lips to pray, and love God's holy book. And walk in wisdom pleasant way, my mother. And if I ever cease to be affectionate and kind to thee, who was so very kind to me, my mother. My mother. 
Ah, no. Thoughts I cannot bear. And if God should make my life despair, I hope I shall be one that cares for my mother. My mother, when dog my healthy air shall be thy stay, and I shall sweet your pains away. Whether they sell, whether they trade, 
anything when you they do. All I am getting away people. Hey. Hey. You say, I'm as far as you be, I am getting away. You did hey. under the covenant of way you did. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, you know, I say, Paris, I say, 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 I I say, 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 so now this is 13,000 now when you for your car now. Now you can take dream of car. I don't understand. Yeah? I don't understand. Don't know it to me. <laughs> I don't win that car. Finish it. See, God will give me this car for bring money for fair. Don't worry. I don't Gateway family, um, you know, when we come, when we gather like this, it's not just for fun, it's because something is happening. Every time we come into God's presence, every time we come to sit under our Father in the Lord, there's something taking place. There's a transference of grace. In fact, the spiritual words used is impartation impartation is taking place and you know i'm i was just thinking of how to make you understand what impartation could be for you and um, i'm i'm a rivers girl yeah i'm married to an evil man but i am a calabari girl by birth and how we go to my communities with a boat we use flying boats and our flying boats have engines and the strength of a boat and the speed of a boat is determined by the engine which is attached to the boat. So a boat that has to go with a 40 um, oh, praise the Lord. Hold on, all of you, hold on, hold on, don't leave me, don't leave me. Wait, 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 wait. 40 horsepower, yes, I got it. So the boats that have to go with 40 horsepower will go slower than the ones that will go with 80. And then when they are double, it is, even, it is even faster. But what am I saying? You are the boat. We are the boat. But the engine that is attached to us can make us go faster. And that engine, that bigger engine that comes to our boat is what comes by impartation. When the Lord puts his hand upon you, your color does not change. Your height does not change. Your intonation will not change. Nothing about you, your past will change. But your capacity will change. When the Spirit comes upon you and he breathes upon you, when he uses his anointed servant to put his hand upon you, he is increasing your capacity, like putting engines onto your boat. And Power to go with speed comes. I want you to hunger for that impartation because that's what takes us on destiny journeys that have beautiful endings. You will be imparted as you open your heart, receive the word, and receive your man of God. The Lord bless you as you do that. Not just today, but all through your life. You shall be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to have the ministry of Dara Speaks. She usually says spoken words that touch the soul. So relax and enjoy today's service. Remember, it is Mother's Day. And so just go with the flow as we have a wonderful time in God's presence. Please let's clap for Dara. Praise the Lord. I'm grateful for this awesome privilege 
Thank you, Daddy. Okay. There is a prophecy over me. I cannot give up now. I cannot fail my Lord. I will fulfill his cause. There is a word over me. I cannot give up now. I cannot fail my Lord. I must fulfill his cause. Beholding in the mirror an image so dark to see. My rage, my rage grew no bounds. As I tried to cover up my stage. I traded its path. I couldn't retrieve. I couldn't retrieve. But it wasn't intentional. They molested me. They did all kinds of things to me. The pain, the heartbreak, the anger, the starvation, the everything. So no time to think. No time to stop. No time to reflect. I hit the street. Men mount. This is freedom. Not come they do JJC. They said. They called it a trend. A trend, but last, last, last come. A new trend to my end. I'm filthy. I'm dirty. And all these are products of the flesh. Because I can do anything and no one to stop me. No one, no one to disturb me. I can do anything and anything I wanted. Consciously, I painted to satisfy my one minute pleasure. <sighs> and drawing up smoke into my lungs. I'm not an addict, it's just compulsion. But I don't want this life anymore. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. But the ability for me to think thoughtfully of the real me is lost. Is lost. Is lost. So I'm tired of this life. I'm worn out. Pray without ceasing. I will pray. I will pray. I will pray. Oh, I will pray. But how do I pray without the reason when all I do is treason? My truth is raw. And my eyes are worn out. But there is a place. My heart cries out for love. There is a place I am yearning for. It is a place where deep calls unto the deep. I am overwhelmed by this deep longing. They play. They play. It is written that the soul that sinned shall die. For weeks, I became your only choice. For months, my presence became the most precious of all places. Like a shaft, you are neither here nor there. You forsook your first love, turned your back, never letting go of old wine skin. You think so, they wise? Or it is written that the soul that sinned shall die. You'll be destroyed for your lack of knowledge. I thought you said your God is a consuming fire. Has he stopped burning? Has he stopped burning? Awa oluwambe lori aye mi o ongbe mi fo ongbe mi sare awa oluwambe Lori aye mi o ongbe mi fo ongbe mi sa who is he that speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit if you live after the flesh 
flesh you will die. But if you follow the way of the spirit, put into end everything of the flesh you will surely live. Come boldly to where mercy dwells. There is no weight of sin. His glory can't handle. Take up your cross. A living dog is better than a dead lion. Run to the risen one. Jesus Christ, the perfect son. The one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. Lay down your burdens. Before the earth began, he knew you. He formed you. Your dimension, your complexion, your frame. Princes will see you and stand. Kings will see you and bow. You are not an accident. You are an envoy. You are an assignment. So this is a call to bow. It's a bow where demons bow. I welcome you to the cost of the Holy Ghost. A brotherhood where we drip and jolly the most. We are the real freedom fighters. We are the army rising up. We fight with no worldly weapon. But using God's weapon in pulling down every stronghold of human reasoning and casting down every false argument. We fight with the whole armor of God. So stand up on your watch. Set yourself on the tower. Bring this body under subjection. So that after preaching, you yourself will not be disqualified. Let him that have ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory If you make a shadow, you don't know what thing God they do for me, yo. Cross and beg, you make me free me, make me free me, yo. If you make a shadow, you don't know what thing God they do for me, yo. Cross and beg, you make me free me, make me free me, yo.
Sitting down when you're the best, it doesn't mean you're not the best. Why you the army? 
Call me like that, so She be for your mind, it be like, say, I don't the crazy, so She be for your mind, it be like, say, I don't the mind, so Power don't change, and money full by hand, the brush up with you She woke up with she came to church and left with severe pains on her ribs. As the day went by, the pain was increasing. Every day the pain was increasing. Said on Wednesday she could not go to work because of the severity of the pain. But then she told herself she would come to church in the evening. In the evening on her way to church, she stopped by the lighthouse and joined the love doctor, Pastor Tari Ojoko, who brought her to the altar of mercy. On her way inside the vehicle, said she was making declarations that God should heal her. She's in the pastor's car. And then she said she heard a voice that told her, Receive grace. She turned to Pastor Terry and she said, I've tapped from your grace. She got to the altar of mercy. After the program, after the prayer, the RP came to close the program and then you prayed for those that had pains. After the service, she came to the altar, laid her hands on the altar, and she told God, I removed this pain and I leave it on the altar. She went back home, the pain was still there. And then she said she remembered the message Papa preached that he said, I cannot be bound. She turned on the message, she listened to it all night and slept with it. By the time she woke up in the morning, the pain had totally disappeared. She's here to give God all the praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mrs. Christina Okafo is here to thank God for healing. She said before now she was not a member of Gateway. Somebody invited her for the journey to please God program. And she started coming. In case of the program, she realized there was a swelling on her leg. She didn't know what happened. But it came like a boil, and it started increasing. Every day, the pain was increasing. The swelling was increasing. At some point, she couldn't wear shoes. She couldn't even wear slippers, nothing. It was so difficult for her to walk. In case of the program, Papa prayed for her. She went to her G12. Her G12 people prayed for her and laid, poured oil on her legs. She said she came out for fresh food, took the, the token. She went home and she started praying with it. She didn't even know when the pain disappeared. Her leg returned to normal. Today she can wear shoes. Her legs are perfect. As if that's not enough, she said, after the healing, she told God, for this healing, I'm going to stay in this house. On Monday, she wanted to go to bed. And she heard a voice that told her, go and check on your son. She went into her son's room, her only son, and discovered that the boy had passed out. She started screaming. She removed her bangle, wore it on his wrist, and they rushed him to the hospital. On their way to the hospital, she kept declaring, the God of Pastor George is in the God of Great Way. Don't let me lose my son. They got to the hospital. The doctor checked on the boy. Today, the boy is hale and healthy. His health is perfect. There's nothing wrong with him. She's here to return all the glory to God. Can somebody give Jesus a better clap offering today? Praise God. My name is Gift Oinyechi. I'm here to testify of the goodness of God in my life. 20, um, since 2023, I've not been attending church. 
So someone directed me to Gateway Church. Um, I came, I had it in mind I would serve God. So I joined the M21 training. During our training, our teacher asked us to invite um, people to church. I went out for so many, I invited two people to church. So on our way coming to church, I told them that we are going to take um, a church bus, the church bus, because my house is a bit far. So when we got to the um, bus, this thing, we, I, weren't, I, uh, I wasn't able to meet up with the bus. So I told them that, that you should not worry, I'll pay their transport to church. I paid their transport to church with the money I was supposed to use um, get materials for people. Like um, I'm a fashion designer, so I paid their transport with the money. So during the week, I wasn't able to meet up to buy the materials and I prayed and asked God for help. So God said to me when I prayed, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing shall be added unto you. I believed in that word and the next morning someone called me that um, someone recommended me and she came with bulk orders. And when I checked my profit, it was more than 20 times the amount I spent through that week, through that week including the transport and everything. And since then I've been getting orders, I've been getting recommendations. God has been announcing my work in different states from Lagos, Abuja, Potako, all the states. Since then, I've been getting recommendations. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness in my life. Praise God. Somebody give Jesus a better clap of her. She went out for kingdom service and God showed up for her. Stand up on your feet and let's worship God. <laughs>
God bless you. Lift your hands everywhere. Everywhere, just lift your hands to the King. Open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute. Lift your voice high. Thank Him. Bless Him. Adore Him. Open your mouth. This is your moment. I want second service. Lift your hands high. Lift your voice high. This is your moment in God. Thank you, Father. Somebody shout a power amen. amen. Just lift your hands. If you don't mind, open your eye, but lift your hands. Can you look up to the altar with your hands lifted to God? Every area of your life where you need quick intervention. In four days, we have the intervention. Yeah. Why I asked you to open your eyes so that you can have enough understanding to respond. Lift your hands and look at me. Wherever you are. There are some of you that need immediate intervention. Some things going on in your mind now is an emergency. If God doesn't show up this week, it gets worse. Lift up the hand and look at me. Between now and Thursday, as the Lord live before whom I stand, you will have the intervention. Financial intervention. Health intervention. Political intervention, marital intervention, career intervention. Lift the hand and say, Father, use me as an evidence of your mercy. Open your mouth and pray the prayer. Use me as an evidence of your mercy. You look past my sins, my guilt and shame, and told you, Lord. You look beyond, beyond. You look beyond, beyond. Look past my sins, my guilt and shame. What you love? You look beyond, beyond. You look beyond, beyond. Lord. is that year. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Lift up the hand. This is our year of Psalm 23. Can you lift your hand and shout 2024? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Somebody is not saying it like you came to get to it. Can you lift your hand and shout 2024? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Open your mouth and make it your declaration of the year. Oh, what a father I have in you. Oh, what a father I have in you. Oh, I surveil everywhere I go. Your name. Oh, what a father I have in you. Oh, what a father.
somebody shout amen could you lift up the hand our time is gone so i'm not going to minister like i normally do a lot of things have taken our time and we have to we are live on radio and we need to keep to time can you lift up your two hands i speak over you as you are stepping out of the oh thank you jesus if your name is informer and you have a pen on your head that has lasted for two years now whether you're in this location or any other location, can you walk up to the altar? Your name is Ifoma. You have a pen on your hip that lasted for about two years. Bend, 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 bend over. Bend. That's why I'm telling you to bend because I know you can't bend. Somebody stand beside her. In the name that's above every name, I command that pen to go. Now bend name of Jesus, help her get up. I command what is wrong in your body. Go! Move your leg. Move your back. Finally, stop. Everybody stretch your hand toward me. How are you feeling on your leg? Your leg is gone. In the name of Jesus, it will never return again. Amen. The pain go now. Can you lift your hand? Ma Andre Bo Satayata. Jatala Balabra Ketra Boski Rakaba Shatia. Ene Kimbra in Kataladoskiata. Jika Krakatra Boskia. I see a lady. I think you are from the river Rhine, but you're married to somebody here uh, around the Moha area. You're from river Rhine, married to somebody around the Moha area. There is something that's there growing out of your body and it's getting bigger and bigger and you know it's coming from your area. You know it's an attack of the devil because you saw it in your father's house. I want you to, if you're in any of the locations, walk to the altar right now. God is going to clear that thing. Any location where you are, walk down to the altar. Just lift up your hand. We don't have the time to minister, but walk to the altar. The moment they put oil on you in the altar, that thing will clear. Everybody that came with an evil deposit from any area, something that entered by dream, something that entered by food, something that entered by sex, something that entered by anywhere in your life. Can I shout every evil bit? Can I show every evil deposit? Get out of my life. Now! Open your mouth and take authority over that deposit. There is They say you have a liver enlargement. Can you walk to the altar, wherever your location is now? Everybody just lift up your hand. Father, whatever evil deposit, whatever evil deposit, whatever evil deposit, Andrea Caprahika to Rabashaha, I command that cease to disappear. I command that pain to go. I command that condition the devil put in your body. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Italagabayam brogo drama zantalataha. As we are living here now, the people I spoke about, and I said, go to the altar, wherever the location is. I command where you are there now, let the healing be done. In the precious name of Jesus. Can somebody shout amen like thunder? This is our month of money. Grab your neighbor's hand on the right and on the left. Don't worry that we didn't take our service the way it is.
you don't bother you, God still can. And you are still going to be blessed. Lift up your neighbor's hand. And let me, if that person holding your hand, you don't trust his prayer, leave his hand. Now, can you say to your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. you can't be poor. See, I've told you again and again, nobody in Gateway has a chance of poverty. If you were ordained for poverty, Gateway has implicated you for riches. Amen. I didn't hear your amen. amen. I told you the dwarf son of an elephant must be bigger than a goat. So even if you are my dwarf son, you must be bigger than your neighbor out there. So lift up your neighbor's hand and shout like thunder. Poverty will not be seen in you. Every power of smallness, every power of stagnation, every power of rejection, every power of poverty, get out! Open your mouth and break it in the life of your neighbor. I see it. I feel it. Testimonies are everywhere around. I see it. I feel it. I feel it. Testimonies are everywhere around. I see it. Somebody shall power. Lift your own two hands above your head. I come out right now. Favor from the east. Favor from the west. Favor from the north, favor from the south. Doors open everywhere. Men and women bless you. Business rise. Ideas come. Connections multiply. Opportunities be created. New contracts this week. New opportunities this week. Take it in the name of Jesus. It won't get to Friday. The contract will be signed. Today is Mother's Day. So to all our beautiful women, happy Mother's Day. We want to pray with you briefly. So, uh, Proverbs 31, 25. Let's read it together. Put it on the screen if you can. Proverbs 31, 25. Are we there? Okay, want to go. Her clothes are well made and elegant. And she always faces tomorrow with a smile. Now that's the kind of lady you know. No, don't lie to me. Number two. When she speaks, she has something worthwhile to say. And she always says this kind. Does that describe your wife? One man said, no. 27. Uh-huh. Does that describe your mama? 28. Louder. Okay, what do they say? Next verse. May that be the story of your family. Amen. Verse 30. Charm can mislead and beauty soon fades. The woman to be admired and praised is a woman who lives in the fear of God. May all our women live in the fear of God. And now verse 31 is the most important. Whatever you deserve, the Lord give to you now. Whatever you have prayed for, the Lord give to you now. Every married woman, single parent, divorcee, Come to the altar now. As you come, they touch you with all you go back to your chair immediately. Make sure you took your bag so nobody takes your phone or anything. Touch them, don't wait as you come. Bless them, they go back to their chair. 
Everybody stretch your hand toward them and begin to pray in tongues over them. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost over them. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost over them. Can I hear a loud prayer? Open your mouth, stretch your hand toward our mother. Leaders go inside the crowd. Make a worship, let's move. Everybody lift up your hands and let's worship the Lord. to say thank you. We give you praise for all our mothers, our wives, our sisters. We declare over them no premature death. A lot of women are suffering from all kinds of infirmity not in gateway. We curse the root of infirmity. We break the hand of the devil. Lord, that we walk in prosperity. Their lives with testimonies of help. In the precious name of Jesus, Amen. we declare no fibroid, Amen. no cyst, Amen. no diabetes, Amen. no high blood pressure. Amen. We declare none of them be kidnapped, Amen. none suffer loss of any kind. Amen. The blessing of God rests upon their lives. They will carry testimonies of your goodness. Amen. We come against miscarriage. Amen. We come against barrenness. In the name of Jesus, the blessing rests upon you. And let everyone shout amen. There's a pastor standing in one place. There are people over there to minister to. Please, can you move them out? Pass them the other way. Can you sit down briefly? Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and shout, I am gateway. My covenant place is at the topmost top. Only good things are permitted in my life. With a louder voice today, I open my heart to the word of God. I believe that the power of God will touch my life. The word of God we work for me. And I know that my life will never, never, ever remain the same. In Jesus Christ's name. Can I hear a power? Amen. Can you help me celebrate Dara for her presentation? The Lord bless you. Thank you. As we here release his album, his new album last uh, Sunday. And uh, and uh, he came to be with us today. Please help me celebrate him. God bless you for coming. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this is our month of money. Has money started entering your hand? If money has not started entering your hand, something is wrong. Psalm 23 verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We are dealing with a series this month on the shepherd is my source. Lift your voice and say, the shepherd, the shepherd is, my is my source. Second service, I mean, first service was livelier than this. The shepherd, the shepherd is, my is my source. Okay, last week I spoke to you on the principle of the BHAG, big, hairy, audacious goals. Today I'm just talking to you very simply because time is far gone on the power of connections. Somebody say connections. connections. Louder, Connections. I said to them in the last service that ingredient is not soup. But soup is made up of uh, ingredients. Not one ingredient makes soup. Uh, 
But you have to combine many of them. Even though they call it a goosey soup, only a goosey doesn't make it. Is that true? Uh, the same thing with success. Success is not a one ingredient soup. No, no, there are so many things that combine to bring success about. You talk about vision. You talk about diligence. You talk about integrity. You talk about favor. You talk about excellence. You talk about resilience. All kinds of things that come together before you can say somebody is successful. But one thing that can make a major difference in success is called connection. Somebody say connection. When you link with somebody, connection is the bridge you build with other people that helps you walk into your destination. It gives you easier access to where you are going in life. Are you with me? And I say to them in the first service, have you ever seen somebody before? I mean, he may be a professional, a businessman, even a pastor. He doesn't attend conferences. He doesn't network with anybody. He's not outgoing. Are you with me? He's critical of those who are doing well. And you just see the person online is not there. Offline is no day too. No, you are not hearing me. He has nobody that's an accountability partner. Believe me, lose hope on that person. Person will not do well. Are you here? I told you many years ago, I wanted, we wanted, when we built our hospital newly, we wanted to employ a doctor. And he's the one I really wanted to work there because I know he has a very good heart for people. I've known him uh, for many years. And I said, you talk to him first. And then, but the people that we are, our leaders decided to, they said, okay, we're going to have an interview. And I've learned in many years of pastoring to allow the process to go through. That's what gives me respect in my leadership. Are you with me? So I said, no problem. So put, instead of imposing him, I said, let's do an interview. So they gathered doctors from different areas that apply. But I said, focus on this person. If he qualifies and others qualify, give him the preference. When they were interviewing, when last did you attend the conference? He has forgotten when last. When last did you do this? The person interviewing just sent me a note. He said, Pastor, we can't take him. He may be a good person, but he's not updating. No, you're not hearing me. And there are many doctors like that that can kill somebody. Come on, are you with me? Do you know there are some drugs that we are using in Nigeria today that they're not using abroad again? Because the doctors don't know. Same thing in ministry. You see a pastor who has been pastoring for 15 years, 20 years. He never attends a conference. He never wants somebody to teach him. Listen to me. Many of you here sit down and they say, oh, there's this conference going on here. We pay 15000 for real estate conference, 15000 for businesses, 10000 for this. And you're a businessman and you will never go. In your mind, you are saving 10000 But in that atmosphere, somebody can make a statement that triggers something in your brain. And the door opens for your next level. You're not hearing me. The reason a lot of Christians are poor is not because of Satan. They're poor because they chose poverty. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There is nowhere you enter on this earth where knowledge is being shared that you don't connect to the spirit of wisdom. Even if what he's saying doesn't apply to you, something said there will trigger some, Am I talking to somebody here today? Somebody knows what you don't know. Somebody can challenge and inspire you. They're not hearing me. And somebody has something that you really need. You need to connect to that person. Somebody knows somebody who can help you. That's why we work on connections. And sometimes the association you build can be a deterrent to people that want to hurt you. That's why you need to associate with people. If you have my voice, say yes. And one connection can open your door to other connections. Lift up your right hand. May God take you where you are going. Amen. It was one connection that changed Joseph's life. He met a man in prison. And the man talked to Pharaoh about him. And all his prayers were answered by one connection. Are you still with me? 
The three Hebrew children you talk about, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if they never met Daniel, if they never became friends with Daniel, you won't hear of them. It was Daniel that spoke to Nebuchadnezzar to appoint them into the cabinet. That's what the Bible says. There's somebody here within the next three weeks. You will meet somebody that will change your story. Three things about connections and destiny lifting. Number one is this. Destiny relationships don't just happen. They are programmed supernaturally. Whether good ones or bad ones. Listen to me. There are many things we call coincidences. But in the spirit realm, there is no coincidence. Coincidence is when the power behind it stayed anonymous. There are some people you meet in life that came to make an arrest. They came to wreck your life. They were sponsored by hell. When Samson met Delilah, he thought he met a nice girl. He didn't know he met the end of his journey. Is anybody hearing my voice here? There are people you meet, somebody sponsored them. And there are people you meet that God sponsored. In marriage, the same thing. That girl you like, something made you like her. And it can be God or devil. They are not hearing me. <laughs> you don't know what caught your eye. I told you a story many years ago in my former church. I was single then. And then a lady, that's what made her a member of the church, was in a native doctor's house at Obakri. I was there and she said the native doctor had a cotton. So you sit here on benches, he's consulting inside there, and you wait. When it's your turn, you go in. And she's sitting down there with two girls. It was their turn to go in first, so they went in. And we're talking to a native, so she was hearing the conversation. She's not born again, doesn't go to Pentecostal church. And this woman, that's an unbeliever, was hearing these two girls. One was telling the other person, please do for my friend what you did for me. And they were discussing about doing a charm to catch a pastor in my former church. The, gear, the lady heard them. They mentioned the church. They talked about that and all of that. Now what concerned me was the gear said, do for her what you did for me. That means that girl is a pastor's wife in my former church who got her husband by something. When the man saw her, he didn't know it was arranged from hell. I may not know the person, but I don't know how it ended. That lady came from the native doctor's house, came to church to report. He said, I know they go to church, but some people wait there here, you know, go be careful for them. <laughs> well, we led that to Christ. She stayed in church. But then I had a meeting. I talked to some of my pastors. My, my senior pastor that was here with us a few weeks ago was also there. Had a meeting. Well, many of them listened. Many of them didn't listen. But the story, some of you that know them know what I'm talking about. I've come to stretch my hand toward you. Come, are you with me? Yes, sir. Uh, are you with me? Yes, sir. I stretch my hand over you. Whatever is arranging the negative for you, die now in the name of Jesus Christ. As you are hearing me, not the positive coming in your direction. If your amen rises, take your portion. Now, now, for you to maximize relationships, you need to discern grace in them. You need to discern grace. Sometimes you say a relationship that doesn't look like it's going to work out good, but you discern grace in it. You're not with me. Remember Rahab? She was a harlot. These guys were going into Jericho and they saw a harlot. These are holy men chosen by Joshua, sent into Jericho and they saw a harlot and they didn't despise a harlot. And the harlot became their key to victory. Now, this is a harlot that saw strangers and discerned grace in them. And so we take you in. They said, no, we didn't come for sex. They said, it doesn't matter whether you pay me or not. I see something about you. And that became her salvation. And the testimony we are still talking about her family today is because she discerned grace. Are you with me? 
There are so many people who don't design grace in relationship. They despise people because of their status at this present time. But the young shall grow. Yes, Come on, are you with me? Yes, they have all kinds of hang-ups. I told them in the first service. When I was about to get married. And then my, I met Manuela and we were talking. And then she kept saying, I want to come and see your place. And uh, of course, I was a holy man. You're not hearing me. And I kept dodging her. I said, no, you can't come to see my place. And other, what would people say? I'm a single man. And then you're a single lady. And you're coming to my house. And I lie. I was living in somebody's one room boys quarter. There was nothing to show. Now, I don't believe in young people going to visit and all of that. That's an invitation to immorality. If you do that, you're setting yourself up for rape. You're setting yourself up for fornication and adultery and all that. You make up your mind. When you are cutting, you don't cut. We want to pray together. Don't pray in the bedroom. If it's a one room, this hall is big enough for prayer. Choose one corner and pray. Are they hearing me here? Yeah? It's all of that. Now, now, the problem with that is that even if you didn't do anything, your neighbors think you did. So it destroys your testimony. And the Bible says, run from every appearance of evil. So be careful. If you have my voice, say yes. yes. Okay, so, so I kept telling her off and then uh, one day she insisted. So I said, okay, you can come. So she came. When she entered the compound, she saw the big house. She thought it was my house. <laughs> of course, she knew it wasn't my house. She thought maybe it was my father's house and all of that. I said, no, 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 we're going to boys' quarter. I said, no, it's not my father's house. I'm just living in the man's boys' quarter. So I took her to the boys' quarter. One room boys' quarter, not self-contained. I was sharing toilet with six people. You're not hearing me. <laughs> so bathroom, you have to wait your turn. Everything was just there and all of that. When she walked in there, she saw the place. She told you, when she walked into my room, the fan, the fan, I used tie to hold it together. When fan is blowing, you have to be praying that tie doesn't lose. That was the room I was in. Come on, are you with me? Now she was a law student. And she had some people that were coming to her, running around her. When I got involved with her, her family despised me, many of them. Because I didn't look big. I told her at the time I met her, her father's senior brother was Nigeria's ambassador to Switzerland. The direct junior to the father was a high court judge. Yeah, the father was a dean of faculty. Me, I was a pastor. <laughs> and nobody took me serious. But if she didn't marry me now, she'll be regretting. <laughs> Tell her I say so. <laughs> I did <dare> now. <laughs> eh? Yeah. Uh, uh, am I not there? <laughs> Lift up your right hand. I declare over you. May you discern grace in people. Amen. I can't hear your amen. amen. And when you discern grace, you relate intentionally. You relate positively. Are you hearing me? Second thing I need you to know is this. That great, relate, great connections may not yield fruit at the beginning. But they grow in value over time. One of the things that makes a lot of young people lose connections is that they want the connection to bring value the next day. The moment you are, they introduce you to a politician, the next day you are begging. The moment you meet a big man, the next day you are begging. You join church in two months time, you are running to see the senior pastor to beg for money. You just, the moment you start, after some time you become a nuisance. They keep you from afar. You see, that connection that brought Joseph out of prison took two years before he matured. But in two years, the result was solid. Some of you need to calm down. Can you touch your neighbor and say, be coming down now? Yeah. Some of you need to calm down. Things are still working. Are you still hearing me here? Yeah. But, but you have to push. You have to run. You have to... No, sir. If it didn't work out this year, it will still work out. The same thing that happens in marriage relationship. Somebody greet you, good morning, sister. You say, I do. He's just greeting you. Can we go out on a date and took you to a restaurant and you finish eating? Now you grab him. Nobody can greet him. He has not even proposed to you. Another sister is talking to a sister after service. As he's talking, you come and stand behind him. 
What is your problem? I just took you out for lunch. There's nothing regular in this relationship. And now you're supervising me like a monitoring spirit. Are you okay? Can I talk to somebody here today? You're not, we're not wedded. Are you here? That's not how relationships go. Even if somebody says, I love you, and I, I'm thinking of marrying you, and all of that, don't grab him and hold him like that. You go choke me to death. If, while well, I never marry you, I can't breathe. When I marry you, the pillow will be over my head. I know they marry. <laughs> Can we talk here? Yes, give it time. And let me give that wisdom to all the women here that are married. Allow your husbands breathe well. They no keep person marry you. Now, are you still with me? <laughs> now you see David. You see David. He had the mighty men. These are men that we are in distress. Men that we are in pain. Men that we are in shame. Are you with me? And then he gave time. He was intentional. He related with them. Gradually they became to rise. Listen to me. Jesus had 12 idiots. And he kept walking with them. And before he knew the idiots became apostles. Come on. Are you with me? There are people now around you that don't look like they matter. But are the secret to your greatness. They are the future for you. I think I'm in the wrong house. Anybody in the second service here remain now. I pray for you. You won't miss your destiny relationship. people by your appearance. Are you here? And give it time, the young shall grow. In this portacle, there are a lot of people that mocked me. Some of them don't mock me again. Because the young grew. No, you are not hearing me. It's the same thing. You talk with boldness anywhere you go to now because the young grew. There was a time when there was nothing. But from nothing, you kept moving. Move around Port Harcourt. Now, see, I was telling the men this morning, or uh, yesterday morning, and all that. In the last two weeks, two of our branches bought new properties. That's God. So, by the time you look around Port Harcourt, now, I told our pastors, I said, next year, I want 15 buildings at the same time. A is building, B is building, C is building, D is building. Will it happen? Yeah. Turn the fire, Satan. Yeah. We got shock them. I lift my hand over you. May you shock your enemies. And then the third thing I want to talk to you about relationship is this. That every good life is one rotten relationship away from destiny trauma and destiny destruction. Every good life is one rotten relationship away from destiny trauma and destiny confusion. It doesn't matter how great your life is now. There's somebody that will enter your life and your life will disintegrate. No, you're not hearing me. Is anybody hearing me here today? There's somebody that will greet you. The only answer is wrong. Good morning, sir. You take off. You didn't hear me. Listen to me. Listen to me. If you're here, say yes. yes. There are people that Satan sends to destroy lives. And when they come, they come smiling. They come looking nice and decent. They are poisonous to your destiny. Be careful. You didn't hear me. Be very, very careful. Every good life is a target. Every good life is a target of the devil. The same thing in business. You came into Port Harcourt, started a business. The aim of your business is to make money. You have not even started. You just saw five million in your account. Now you have one girl in Uniport, another in Arace you. And you are buying iPhone every week. And you are moving up and down. I thought you said you came to church to worship God. Why are you worshiping God with a girl now? You just came to church and somebody sang in the choir and you lose your head. You saw somebody ushering and you forget that Jesus is Lord. Are you okay? 
Am I talking to somebody here today? When we are sense return, you are one relationship away from destiny destruction. You are carrying too much load on your life. It's messing up who you are. Nobody may tell you that you are about to die. Proverbs 13 verse 20. Become wise by walking with the wise. Hunger with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. Hang out with fools and watch your life fall to pieces. Even though we are talking about connection, not every connection is your own. There are people that when they walk into your life, they poo-poo on your destiny. When they step away, you can't recognize yourself again. Come on, are you with me? Do you know a person can have a good reputation, but one thing can spoil it? Lift up your right hand. I pray for you today. Whatever setup the enemy has put in your life to mess you up, the Lord destroy it. The Lord destroy it. The Lord destroy it. The three things that help people attract quality people into their lives. Three things that help people attract quality people into your life. The first one is your capacity for excellence. If people see you looking attractive and looking excellent, they are interested in you. That's the first thing. It attracts them. The second thing is the value you generate. When they see that you produce gain, they invest in you. And the third one is the quality of your character. When they see that you are a person of character, it sustains relationship with them. So, excellence attracts them. Value makes them invest in you. Character sustains connections. In the first service, we looked at excellence and connections. Let me talk to you briefly on value and connections. And third service, I talk on character and connections. Listen to me. Nobody likes associating with a parasite. Are you with me? There is no good worm in the stomach of any man. If you find it, you will kill it. What I'm saying, is that true? Anybody here like mosquito in your house? He said, the sound of mosquito excites me. Hoo, hoo, hoo. I need more. Anybody here? Or you say, the, the, in fact, the, the kind of rat in my room is getting healthy. I saw it when it was small. Now it's getting bigger. The rat I'm training. You know some of you are training many rats. Your house is a rat training ground. <laughs> are you with me here? Listen to me. Nobody likes a parasite. If you can't bring value, you will soon lose what? Everybody look up here. Hello? Please, every, every, stop writing, look up here. Favor can give you a connection. But what you bring to the table is what we keep the connection. Many people pray for favor. Lord, send help us. Lord, connect me. Lord, connect me. When you are connected, what is the value you bring? What is the value you bring? You can't hang around me without doing something. The relationship that people care about the most is the one that enriches their life the more. So if I'm relating with you, what are you adding to my life? 2 Timothy 4 verse 11. Paul was talking. He said, only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for ministry. He said, bring Mark. Now, now, now. I know our time is gone, but let me explain. If you are here, say yes. yes. Second service, are you probably angry with me? Yes. Okay, can I hear your yes now because you wash your mouth before coming? Yes. Hey. Okay, now, praise the Lord. Anyone remember... That when Paul started his missionary journey, he went with a man called Barnabas. Ah, huh? the, the Holy Ghost says, "Separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work I'm sending." So Paul and Barnabas went on the missionary journey. When they were going, Barnabas had a cousin called John Mark. So 
Barnabas said, can John Mark follow us and serve us? Paul said, no challenge. So John Mark came and was working with them. But John Mark didn't know that ministry is hard. He thought that ministry is a game. So he followed Paul and Barnabas and hardship of ministry hit him. On the way, he decided he has had enough and said to return back home. Paul was so angry. This man that followed to serve us abandoned us halfway. No challenge. They continued their journey. When they returned from that missionary journey and came back to Jerusalem and were telling testimonies of all the mighty things that happened, John Mark got excited again. He said, I'm going to join this time again. I won't go back again. Paul said, no, 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 no. Once beaten, twice shy. You're not coming with us. Barnabas said, no. Let him come. And that's how tribalism enter ministry. Nepotism enter ministry. Paul and Barnabas began to quarrel. The two co-founders of the ministry. And they separated. That separation, you didn't hear Barnabas again in the Bible. His journey ended. There are people when you walk away from them, you walk away from destiny. Am I talking to somebody here? When Lot walked away from Abraham, he walked away from destiny. When Barnabas left Saul, he left destiny. Even though they were called together, but they were not equal in calling. Come on, am I talking to somebody here today? So Barnabas went away with John Mark and couldn't do well. When John Mark saw that the minister of Barnabas wasn't doing well, he left him again. You know, there are people that have grade one in leaving people. He, he left him again and went back to Jerusalem. When he got back to Jerusalem, guess what? He became an apprentice of Peter. And Peter settled down and began to groom this boy and began to give him attention and mentor him. I'm sure you know that the book you call Mark in the Bible was a Facebook of Peter. When I'm quiet. When I know they go Bible study in this church. Are you with me? It's Peter that dictated the book for John Mark to write. That was the first book of Peter. Hello? So, when Paul saw the things that John Mark was producing now, suddenly... This useless man now has value. Paul wrote a letter. He said to Timothy, please, this boy I rejected before, bring him because now he is valuable. Woman, listen. If you produce value in that home, your husband will respect you more. Produce value. Don't be the kind of woman that husband will buy, bra, buy pad, buy lipstick, buy everything. Feed the house, pay rent, everything. You, there's no reaction in this generation. Everybody is on Marco. You have to produce. Are they hearing my voice here? They say, why is he talking like that on Mother's Day? Because the woman I was reading about for Proverbs 31, they called her a virtuous woman. That woman, that woman, that woman, the land herself and husband built on, she bought it. Read Proverbs 31. When I'm quiet. They call her a virtuous woman, not because she's always smiling, but because she bought the land for her husband for them to build. So, madam, for you to be virtuous, buy land for me. <laughs> I have to close. The women want to fight me today. I didn't, I didn't want today to be very hot. You know, the weather is very hot. So I didn't want to be shouting and screaming and ministering and all that because the weather is hot. We are still working to see that in a few days' time we start the insulation. I've told them to do whatever they can so we can start so this heat can reduce. Will that be okay? So bear with us and all of that. If we can put up the AC at the same time, we'll do it. I want to see that the heat reduces. So I'm trying not to shout because I'm sweating too. So, but it's okay. He said, Mark was profitable. The moment you are profitable, the people who didn't want you before, we want you. So become a person of value. That's why you grow yourself. That's why you have skills. When I see a 35-year-old person who has no education and no technical skills and no handwork learned and no nothing, you, you don't know how to help the person. Be a person of value. 
Build spiritual value. Build intellectual value. Build business value. Build value in everything. Are you with me? Are you with me? Five values you must bring into any connection. Five values. Number one is life enthusiasm. Any connection you get into, please be a positive minded person. Bring enthusiasm. Bring life into that relationship. I don't want to marry a woman that's always sad. You're not hearing me. Many young girls think that, you know, they're getting to 25, 30, 35, 40. Their face begins to change. Every time they're always very unhappy and all that. And they think that that will give them a husband. That will take men away from you. Listen, no matter whether you're old or young, as you come out, come out alive. Everywhere you appear, businessman, poor or rich, don't let suffering be written on your face. Am I talking to somebody here too? When you are coming into church, dress well. Look like a million dollars. Money in the house, money not in the house. Carry yourself well. When you shake hands with somebody, shake strong. When you talk, talk with a smile on your face. Never present yourself a beggar. Am I talking to somebody here? Carry life enthusiasm. They say Nigeria not the walk. You say my own the walk. Is your own walking? Is your own walking? Is your own walking? Another value you bring into a relationship is no begging. No begging. I don't have a friend. I don't have a friend in ministry that I begged before for assistance. Not one. I don't have a friend under heaven whose money is in this building except somebody said to send and I didn't know. Buying land. I don't, I don't beg. I don't beg. I don't explain myself. I just keep moving. You are not hearing me. I just keep moving. I don't, I don't have that time. Stop begging. There is, no, there is no dignified beggar on earth. There is none. I've never seen a woman walking on the road before. Saw somebody, Babi Allah, and said, Kai, I want to marry this guy. He's begging his style. I've never seen that. Am I talking to somebody? Else? I, I've never seen that before. Stop begging. When a man meets a man, stand equal with the man. I told the men a story, something that excited me last week. Are you with me? Huh? In my community, there were four of us young men that I remember that went to the same school. There are many others, but at least four of us went to the same primary school. And, uh, we grew up, and then three of us were quite intelligent, three of us. One is a lawyer now practicing. The other is a professor of law, and then myself, I'm pastoring. There was a fourth one. That one was one of those that would take first from behind. Are you with me? The four of us. The others, but these are four of us from my village that went to the same school, and we're in the same class. The one that was struggling, and then two of them, one is a professor of law, one is a, med, a lawyer now, and the mindset that's pastoring. Now something happened. That one that was taken first from behind became a blowout business success. A multi-millionaire. He's doing well. I mean, last month he sent me a millionaire and said, chop life. I mean, I, I like people like that who send me money. I, I'm sure you know that. If you keep sending me, I will like you too. <laughs> so, come, are you hearing me? Now he sent the money. Now there was something going on in my village. So when he sent them, I didn't tell him. He didn't even know I'm going to. So I sent the money to the project we wanted to in my village. I gave them the million that he sent. And he also donated to the project. The one that said Professor of Law, I saw him. He sent a million. And then this other one that is a lawyer. Three or four, when we're in the class, no matter what village or town you came from, in the same class we were, the three or four were the only ones struggling for first position. And the teachers used to exchange it. 
I think they were doing it intentionally. First term himself, second term, the other one, third term me, and then all of that. It's not, I know teachers do things like that. <laughs> Come on, are you hearing me? So we just kept doing like that until we came out. Now, he was practicing in Lagos, had a little issue. He came down, his practice wasn't too good. He had to relocate and came in here. And things became a bit challenging. We are friends. We keep going on and all that. Now, in the midst of this, these monies have been donated. I've given. This one has given. That one has given. Now, he is in the same platform with us. And he can't give. He wrote a letter. I read the letter. Brothers and sisters, the way I look at him went up. There are some people, if it is them, they will come, come out of the platform. They will not associate. They will allow shame to catch them. He wrote that he's proud that his classmates look at what we are able to do in the community. He talked about that with pride and encouraged everybody, prayed for everybody, and he's trusting God to be able to give soon. And that ended it. Everybody in the community from different areas began to comment on the letter. I said to myself, this is a kind of person to associate with. Not the person that's a secret witch. Come, am I talking to somebody here today? Somebody, there are men in church. If their business is not going well, there won't be men's meeting. Anytime something, they won't hang around with their friends. Why? Shame. Ego won't allow them to be where others are. They've not had the baby. They can't associate with women. No, sir. No, man. Are we still talking? No begging. You are there strong and you carry yourself well. The third one is dependability. That's what will bring to a connection. Dependability is the greatest ability on earth. That you can, somebody says to you, are you with me? You say, I'm with you. Are you standing? You say, I'm standing. They give you something, you deliver and deliver where you are dependent. Somebody say dependable. Uh, give me this money. I'm going to pay in so so and so time. Exactly that time you pay. Dependable. The fourth thing you bring to a relationship is inspiring ideas. That everybody that sits with you, ideas keep flowing from you. You don't sit down in a relationship and nothing is in your brain. They didn't give you coconut or sawdust. God planted something in you. Be bold enough. You say, what if I say something? And they say, it's stupid. Even a stupid idea can inspire a good one. What I'm saying, is that true? When people are talking, contribute. I said to my leadership team, if, no matter who you are, if you keep coming for leadership meeting, and when people are raising hands, you won't raise hands. When they comment, you won't comment. This and that. You can't stay in the leadership. Unless RP kept you. If it's me, I will fire you. I don't want you to sit down there and every meeting you have nothing to contribute. Now you are dead, but there I go eat. Oh, now they hear me so. I want your idea. Have you noticed that many of the people that when they go out, they say, ah, you know, eh, eh, you say this is what they should have done. When they had the opportunity of saying something, they say anything. Ideas. Bring ideas to every relationship you go to. And then finally, what to bring to any relationship is visible results. The more you keep succeeding, the more your friends keep valuing you. The more your worth starts rising. Produce visible results, not fake one. Not fake one. Visible results. Somebody say visible. visible. That you are riding a big car doesn't mean you're a big man. Visible results. In whatever vocation you are in, let people see your results and let your results speak. Whether you're in ministry, in business, in politics, visible results. The more you produce results, the more your worth rises. Our time is gone. Are you with me? But I need you to know that when God connects people, their value begins to rise. I see you rise. As I see you rise. I see you rise. Amen. The people that God brings into your life bring covenant results to your life. Amen. But let me tell you this. Can I say this to you as I close? Huh? God will not give treasures to trash. 
God will not give pills to pigs. You are not hearing me. If you are hearing me, listen. If you don't build up yourself in character and build up yourself in value, don't ask God to give you great people as friends. No. Develop yourself. Build your character. Build your self-worth. Build your resource. Become somebody that when a man associates with you, he learns something. I always say this to you from the time I was small in ministry. It doesn't matter who it is. If I stay with you for some time, I will never feel small. I keep learning and I keep growing. Please, keep learning, keep growing, keep bringing value and nobody will keep you down. And trust God to bring the right people into your life. Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain will build it. Rise to your feet. I think I have preached. That's why you are responding that way. Can you stand to your feet? Lift your two hands. I'm going to pray just two prayers for you. And then you can go home. Between now and the last day of this month, the person that will shift your destiny ten times over, look at you. I'm going to say it only three times. And your amen will determine whether you have it. Lift your hand above your head. Between now and the last day of this month, the person that will shift your destiny ten times over, look at you. For the last time, between today and 31st day of March, a man or a woman within or outside Nigeria, in government or outside government, person you know or you have never met before, that will shift your destiny 10 times over, will locate you in the name of Jesus. final prayer lift up the hand anywhere you are found may the grace to interpret people's dreams may the grace to bring value to other people be released upon you be released upon you you will never enter any life empty you will never enter any life without value you will never meet any man you not going to contribute to. In the name of Jesus. From today, a new glory rests on you. Before you pray the last prayer, there may be many people here today who need to make their ways right to God. Please keep standing. We have one more prayer to pray. You want to make your way right with God. You are saying to Jesus, I want this connection with you. We've talked about physical connection, but the greatest connection is the spiritual one. Jesus, take over my life. I want to be your own. Lay your right hand on your chest if you are like that. And pray with me and say, Jesus, I come to you. Forgive my sin. Change my life forever. Amen. If you pray that prayer, carry your bag and Bible, run to the altar. I want to pray with you. Everybody here, stretch your hands to the altar. Stretch your hand to the altar. Please, if you pray the prayer of salvation, can you move to the altar fast? God resists proud people. He gives grace to the humble. Move quickly. Married or single, young or old, come quickly. Everybody stretch your hand toward the altar. I want you to ask the Lord. Listen to me. I want you to ask the Lord. Hello? They are not hearing me. Hello? I want you to ask the Lord for a 12-day miracle. I don't know who you are. But I feel in my spirit that within 12 days, something strange is about to happen. Stretch your hand toward the altar. I feel there are angels here now about to take that out. Can you stretch your hand and pray? You may close your eye, you may not close your eye. Stretch your two hands to the altar and ask God in 12 days, do for me what no man can do for me. 
turn this story around it will be your business in your marriage in your career there's a 12 day miracle for somebody in this service He's a miracle story change can I tell you something more than 25 of you physically in this building will come back with testimonies of this world in all the locations the answer will multiply it is done sit down everything we are going to do now will be done in two minutes so everybody pay your tithe run to the altar quickly Everyone that honors covenant pays tithes. Those who don't honor covenant argue it, debate it, social media it, so all kinds of things. But we don't bother. We honor God. I'm your pastor. I paid my tithe before standing before you. I can't be blessing with cursed hands. So you come honor the Lord. Pay your own tithe. That's 10% of your gross income given to God as a covenant partner with him in your own business and life and career. Move quickly. Everybody lift up your offering with two hands. Almighty God, honor your people. Bless them. Do amazing things in their life. And lift them into your place of honor. In Jesus' name. Shout amen as you give your offering. Altar of mercy continues tomorrow. 11 p.m. until 12.15 a.m. This week will be brutal. We trust the Lord you'll be there. On Wednesday, we continue our business training. There were some men who could have been here on Wednesday. We had a trainer that trains for Google across Africa. Was here to do a training for you and some people didn't come. We thank God for the thousands that came and I believe that this, one, this Wednesday, this house will be full in Jesus' name. So please be here on Wednesday. Let's have a beautiful time. 5 p.m., we do the training for a business breakthrough. And then we're still going to give up some small, small bags of rice to a lot of people and trust the Lord their lives will keep getting better in Jesus' name. My wife will be, being, will be 50 years on, on Saturday. <laughs> Amen. And uh, on Friday, we're going to have a very powerful service here. We're going to have Nobuji singing. We're going to have Priyo dead singing. We're going to have... Uh, a few of the artists around, I, can't, I don't remember all their names. Please, can you give me my material so I can call out their names? We're going to have a worship session, an impartation session. So every one of you, please be here on Friday. By what time? 5 p.m. And there will be food uh, also to eat. It's a birthday now. Should we eat on the birthday? So let's be here. Now next Sunday, please, pick any foreign currency you want to come with and come with it. It's not an offering. It's an impartation. When you come and speak over it, go back home with it again, depending on what you want to do. Next Sunday, there will be MT1 orientation. Those of you that needs to uh, get into that new in church, want to do your orientation next, when, uh, next Sunday by 2 p.m. at the building over there. So please be here. And uh, our Peniel. Ah, my God, my God, my God. Anybody waiting for Peniel? Some people have been begging me. I brought out one car, my car, and said somebody's going to win it on a raffle. And I said that the car can only be won by people who invite people to church. Now, some of you didn't invite last Sunday, so I cancel you from the, you can't even compete. Is there a pastor help us? No, sir. It's my car, my rules. Now, some people, they miss their luck. Next time you go learn. Today is your first day in Gateway. Can I see your hand up? First day in Gateway. Carry your bag and Bible. Come quickly. Move fast. You have one minute to get to me. Clap until they get here. Come fast. Come fast. Come fast. God bless. Okay, since you don't want me to lay hands on you first, let me start with this guy. Go this way. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. When you get there, 
Please write then your name and also give us the name of who brought you. God, it get why. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Move fast. God bless you. 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 I bless you in the name of the Lord. I bless. When I say God bless you, say Amen. I'm laying hands on you. Some of you, <laughs> you'll be looking for this hand laying another three wings. God bless you. Move fast. God bless you. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Young man, come. Come. Ah. God bless you. I bless you in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Come closer. God bless you. Somebody celebrate them. Okay, buddy, stand up. Your service has expired. God bless you. God bless you. Stand up, stand up. Better people are waiting outside. <laughs> are you the best? Go in peace. The hand of God be with you. You are the best. This week we work for you. There shall be no loss in Jesus' name. Women, if you can stay back in this service, God bless you. Hallelujah.